Welcome back to the News at 10. The Lagos State Government has defended its action in the demolition of Owoni Fiery Markets, insisting that the action was taken in the overall interest of public good, safety and security. During a joint press briefing by the state's ministries of information and strategy, the environment, physical planning and urban development, local government and chiefs and affairs, and the Office of Civic Management, Civic Engagement, beg your pardon, the state government explained that it has constructed alternative stalls for the traders. The Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Mr. Steve Ayorindi, also asked that the traders had been adequately notified before the start of the exercise as required by law. Satisfied that we had provided uh, a befitting alternative, uh, we started another round of engagement with the leadership of the market. And then, ultimately, His Excellency the Governor, Governor Akin Wumiambodi, now appealed through um, the Honorable Commissioner for Local Government and Community Affairs to invite the leadership of that market to the ESCO chambers. And they did meet with the ESCO. Quite a good chunk of them acknowledged that they had been properly served and that they were ready to move, which was where many of them, a good number of them, uh, if not all, um, packed their things just before uh, the end of the year. We got intelligence reports that uh, as at that time during the holidays, there were uh, a number of criminal activities that were going on there and that the place was harboring uh, criminals and a number of untoward activities, which of course necessitated that the state should move. The aim of government, as we stated earlier in our press release, is to ensure that that area of the market conforms with the type of image that we want Lagos to be. I'm speaking with Governor Adam Soshomalo of Edo State. To an update now on the spread of Lassa fever, the Chief Medical Director of Irua Specialist Teaching Hospital in Edo State, Dr. Silvanos Okobeni, has been giving Nigerians tips on how to prevent the spread of the disease. Dr. Okobeni also says that medical practitioners alongside state authorities are doing their best to bring the situation under control. He adds that there is no need to panic. One has to break that contact between the rat and the human population. But that's not very easy because these multi mammoth rats live in and around the houses. They breed very prolifically. In other words, they, are, they, they, they bring out a lot, large number of um, offsprings and they do this very frequently. So they are one efficient way of transferring the virus. Therefore, things we can do include to plug the holes where the rats enter the house, ensure we don't burn the bushes around the houses because that just makes the rats run into the houses. Then we, some other people use traps, but you have to be careful when you use traps so that when you kill the rat, the fluids from the rats don't contaminate you. Then we also make sure that foods are well cooked and they are kept in containers that are rodent proof. In other words, when you keep your food, you must make sure they are well covered. That can help you break the contact between rodent excrements and humans. It's also important that when people are infected, they are taken to hospitals where they can be properly treated. Because you will need personal protective equipment you will need to be isolated. Such patients need to be isolated in special wards. And in fact, the different equipment you use for them, they need to be different from that you use for every other patient. So there must be isolation for such patients. Let's check in now on Business News with Imana Amawe. Hello there and welcome to Business News. 25% devaluation of the Naira is imminent. And that's according to a sovereign research organization, Exotics Partners, based in London. Speaking on our program, Business Incorporated, the chief economist, Exotics Partners, Mr. Alan Cameron, believes that the likely midpoint for the Naira new band is in the 240 Naira to 250 Naira per dollar range. 
Mr. Cameron believes the current rate is not sustainable. It's largely a question of market confidence. It's about what exchange rate will allow you to stabilize your reserves position. Um, and I think you know the feedback that I've gotten since writing this note and the feedback which I've gathered over the course of you know the last year, let's say, suggest that 10% is just not going to do it. And I think that's consistent with the experience that you've seen in other countries. Um, it's going to take a lot more than that. Now, there's a lot of moving parts in the external accounts. The oil price is one of them, but there's also others. It you know, depends how much leakages are happening. It depends what foreign portfolio investors are going to do. And largely depends how you know, domestic investors are going to try and position for this. So I think you know, when you, you look at the variables which are in the financial account, and those are usually the faster moving parts of, of the external accounts, you need to set the currency to a level that people are going to find credible. And I think right now 220 is just not credible. It's going to take a little bit more than that. Now, the German Senate's Committee on Finance, Senator John Eno, says that the National Assembly will throw its weight behind the executive arm of government in order to reduce wastage and revenue generation. Senator Eno shared his views on our Business Morning program on the backdrop of the International Monetary Fund Managing Director's visit to Nigeria. You know, most of what you said, there is already some um, ongoing beginning initiative, even on the part of the executive, you know, witness, for example, the fact that the current finance minister from the one, you know, set up the efficiency unit in her ministry and all that is supposed to, you know, get us to achieve, you know, um, our money's worth in terms of what we spend, how we can reduce wastages, you know, and things like that. So, so, so I think that what the National Assembly can do as a legislature is to, is to give support, you know, to what initiatives are coming well, the local boss was lifted by 31 basis points today on the back of slight gains recorded in the industrial goods sector as Dangote cement stock swung back into green. BC Adebayo has details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Reports. The Nigerian equities market staged a slight recovery for the first time this year on the back of gains recorded by market heavyweight Dangote Cement. Up 0.31%, the All Share Index ended Thursday's session at 27,266.18 with a market capitalization of 9.37 trillion naira. Dangote Cement led the day's gainers ahead of Okomo Oil and E Transact. On the flip side, Seplat was the heaviest loser and is followed by 7up and Nigerian breweries. Guarantee Trust Bank, Access Bank and UBA were the major contributors to market turnover. When the closing gong sounded, investors had exchanged 166.39 million shares valued at 1.65 billion naira in 2,917 deals. That ends the stock market reports. I am BC Adebayo. Many thanks, BC. While the free fall continued on most global equities today, let's see how the global markets fed. And it's a wrap on business news tonight. I'm Imana Amawe. It's back to Amarachi. Still ahead of the news at 10, Ghana's Andrea Yu and Pierre Emerick Aboumeyang of Gabon up against Yaya Toure for the CAF African Footballer of the Year Award tonight. That's the sports news. Stay with us.